I went back to Warner Brothers and recut my first on THX, and I forced them to put it back the way it was. <laughs> then I went to Universal, and I forced them to put American Graffiti back the way it was. This was before VHS, by the way. And so when VHS came out, it came out with my version, and then eventually I had enough money and time and energy to do it to Star Wars and to all of them. I remember that. that was, I believe that one was called Revenge of the Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wow. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> All right, here's from Dave of San Francisco, the hometown. This one is, is sort of a more of a logic question. Uh, Luke Skywalker. We're trying to keep him hidden, obviously, from, from Darth Vader, whose last name was also Skywalker. <laughs> It's, it's, 
There's a whole story behind all that, which is in the beginning, I did do a movie. It was supposed to be one movie. It was sort of the tragedy of Darth Vader, which is, or the tragedy of Anakin Skywalker. But it started out with this monstrous guy. Uh, it started out in episode four. So you were in a, like a Republic serial or a Saturday night matinee serial or an episode of 24, and you missed the first episode. Right. You come in, and this big monster guy comes in and kills everybody and all this sort of stuff. And then halfway through the movie, you, you realize, or he realizes, that his main opponent is his son. And then, in the end, his son redeems him. But the movie was way too big, so I couldn't do that. So I did one movie, which is the first act. Right. And then as I put it out, you know, every, once every three years, Darth Vader was such a more powerful figure than I ever imagined him to be. He sort of overwhelmed the movie, and then the question is, is he a human, is he not a human? Before you heard that all in one sentence, now you've broke it up. So you jump to conclusions, you know, sort of like an edited videotape where you sort of think one thing, but the truth right. is if you see the whole thing as something else. That's what happened. But in order to tell that story, episode four, I had to write the backstory, which was not meant to be a movie. It was just meant to say, well, who is Darth Vader? Where did he come from? Uh, where, where is the Empire? Where is the Republic? Who are all these people? Uh, so I had to put all that stuff out there in order to get to the end. But because it got so spread out, it got very uh, diffused. So the story was kind of half directing me, and I was half directing the story in terms of how much I uh, had to do it. And, and because the backstory was not filmable, just technologically, you couldn't shoot Curacao and Yoda. But I barely got to Yoda. The big technological breakthrough in Empire Strikes Back was the fact that we got a puppet look real enough for people to believe it was a real thing and not just a sock. <laughs> uh, but obviously, he couldn't walk, you know, more than that far. And he could never show his feet. And, you know, there was just all these things you could age. Obviously, you couldn't sword fight. And I knew in the beginning he was a Jedi master and he could be fought. But I couldn't show that because how could I do that with a puppet? So it wasn't until actually digital technology came over right. into my reality that I said, you know, I could tell the, the real tragedy of Darth Vader, start with him as a little kid and follow all the way through so you can see the whole story. Because it's, I wrote it, it's done. And of course, that's where having my own company, doing it myself, really did pay off because, and obviously there's a group of people that, that wish that the studio done it, but the thing is, when I first went and said to some of the people in my company, I said, I'm making the movie. You really are doing a Jedi mind trick. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the people in the company are in the first row. Uh, the, not the film they all look for. Yeah. <laughs> you will never let this down. Uh, but, you know, I, they said, oh, you're going to do the first first one, I said, well, I'll do three, I'll do the trilogy and everything, and I said, the first one is, uh, you know, obviously it's a story of how Darth Vader came to be Darth Vader. Oh, fantastic, Darth Vader. And the studio especially said, oh, man, we're there 110%. And I said, well, I'm starting when he's a 10-year-old boy, and you're never going to see Darth Vader <laughs> in the suit. And I said, oh, no, no, you're going to destroy the franchise, it's going to be terrible, nobody wants to see a movie about a 10-year-old boy. Oh, you're just destroying the whole thing. This is not, we want to see the, we want to see Darth Vader rock and kill a bunch of people. <laughs> but that's not the story. There is actually a story, you know, it starts here and ends there, and it's actually a story. And the first chapter is pretty boring, which is why I started chapter four. <laughs> but I said, for those people that like to read through the index, they might want to know what happened and the whole story. So I said, I'm going to do this. But if I had, if the studio owned the property, it would never have happened. It would be basically like, you know, uh, Star Wars six, seven, eight, nine. It'd all be exactly the same movie over and over again. Right. Same story, doing the same thing, sword fights in every one of them. Was there ever, was there ever through the process, in your own mind, a change of? whether or not this would be a story of redemption, whether or not Darth Vader would be redeemed at the end. Was there ever a thought to the darkness of it? When the, the, he was always going to be redeemed because that was basically the story. The problem I had is because I, when I did the first one, and again, when I did the first one, you know, i got to remember this was a 
completely wacky idea. I mean, you know, again, I walk 